CCTV's W5. They arrive here as tourists. A sinister gang of prolific thieves. This is the type of house they are searching for. It was approximately $2.7 million worth of property. The network is growing. Organized crime is getting bigger. And... I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. Can humans survive a trip to the Red Planet? It would be amazing to be on, like, the first mission. If you're in space, this is what it feels like. I think we need to go to Mars for a lot of reasons. CTV's W5 with Omar Sachedina, Dan Riskin, and Lisa Laflamme. Here is Omar Sachedina. Hello, and thanks for joining us. Every year, about 20 million foreign visitors come to Canada, most as tourists, to explore our country and to see the sights. But recently, police from coast to coast have been watching a small number of tourists who've come here on a working vacation as criminals, breaking into houses, knowing that if they're caught, they're likely to be deported and sending home not postcards, but their ill-gotten gain. Oakville, Ontario, population 200,000, is a quiet suburb west of Toronto. Like many commuter cities across Canada, these streets are quiet during the day, leaving homes susceptible. This is when criminals start lurking. One will knock on the front door to make sure nobody's home. Once certain the house is empty, they will usually go to the back and scope out a vulnerable entry point. Then, they strike. I was going to the gym with my daughter and my son, and when I got home, I was only gone about an hour and a half, and I noticed our back sliding door was open. Caitlin Crawford and her family are still haunted by the day their home became a target, discovering an open back door. And the lock was broken, and I was, I still couldn't figure out why, how had this happened, so I called my husband at work, and I said, this is so strange, our back door is open and the lock is broken. And immediately he just replied, Caitlin, we've been broken into. And immediately my stomach just dropped and I felt sick, I, I just felt shaky all over, and I, he was like, it's okay, just get the kids and get out of the house. Her husband, Baylor, was at work in Toronto. First of all, I thought I want her to be calm and be safe, so leave the house and go, go next door and then immediately call 911 yeah. and have the authorities come uh, to the house. And uh, yeah, I immediately came home. The Crawford's house was one of thousands of break and enters in and around Toronto in 2018, a crime that left this family violated losing precious family heirlooms stolen in a matter of minutes. Just feeling very invaded and having strangers in our home and especially um, in our kids' bedrooms, that part was really um, kind of a sickening thought that there was somebody going through our things uninvited. In early 2018, we had noticed an uptick in residential break and enters. So we started pouring additional resources into it, uh, from investigators to analytics. Halton Regional Police Detective Sergeant Paul Foley's criminal investigations team responded to many of these burglaries, including the Crawfords. This uptick in break and enters had a specific MO. So essentially, you would have one individual or one suspect would go and knock at the door, ring the doorbell, and would wait a couple minutes and see if there was anybody home. And if there was no one home, then they would contact other suspects who would attend the rear of the residence. And generally, they were smashing the patio door and entering. And they were in and out within a couple of minutes, targeting jewelry, cash, designer clothes. Even with hundreds of houses burglarized in the Halton region alone, all in a span of a few months, police had no leads until... At the beginning of March, there was a, a citizen who was walking his dog and he ended up witnessing a break and enter occur. And that's kind of what put the investigation in, uh, in high speed from there. 
it was Nabal Slim, only a few kilometers away from the Crawfords, who gave police the lead they had been searching for. This is the actual security camera footage showing two men walking to the back of a row of houses through an alley. That is when Nibal jumped into action. So you were out here in March with Oscar, your dog. It was about 5 o'clock p.m., right? Yeah. And like I'm walking, and when I reached very close to our neighbor's house, I heard like glass breaking. The glass went down, and I saw someone at the porch. So I screamed at him, what are you doing? And he took the stairs and ran away from here. So I immediately start running from here and called 911. So basically you're on the phone with the 911 operator and you're chasing Yeah, I was burglar. chasing him just to be able to see if I can see them on, on the road. And I saw like the one guy running into the car and he went directly to the front plate of the car and he tilted. Maybe he didn't want me to see the car plate number. When I chased the car, I tried to stop them, but he drove into me. Then I was able to see the back plate number on the car. And just with that one license plate, we were able to redirect all the resources uh, to two individuals that were associated to that vehicle. And within approximately two weeks, we had identified about 15 to 20. 15 to 20 suspects. And what Paul and his team discovered was extremely unusual. They were all Chilean nationals that were here as tourists. Some of them uh, were here a couple of months and some had been days. They're not coming to the country uh, advertising their purpose. And they arrive here and, as tourists. And it wasn't just Oakville. As Detective Foley checked with police across Canada, he discovered a crime wave from coast to coast. I do know that it's happening in other parts of the country. Just as recent as of August, we had a group that was based out of Montreal that were coming to the greater Toronto area to commit these crimes and then returning. And over the years, at least six more Chileans have been arrested in Montreal, with a pair of robbers stealing over $210,000 from one house alone. And the earliest example we could find occurred in 2015, when Toronto police arrested 12 Chilean nationals who faced 97 charges related to breaking and entering. Across the country, RCMP in Revelstoke and British Columbia's interior arrested three Chileans with $43,000 in cash and over $70,000 in stolen jewelry. Police later determined that the burglaries occurred in the Vancouver area, almost 600 kilometers away. And most recently in York Region, Ontario in October 2019, Police arrested another three Chilean men for breaking into over 25 houses, with police laying over 60 charges. More and more security camera footage became available to Halton Regional Police, most of it showing the burglars caught in the act of breaking and entering, with no regard for security cameras or alarm systems. Police investigated a staggering 400 homes in and around the Toronto area, all targeted by just one suspected crime ring. They're organized. I've been asked, are they coming to Canada specifically to commit these crimes? And I don't know the answer to that. Um, but what I do know is that once they got here, uh, they resorted to crime. As the investigation continued, Halton Regional Police began surveillance on the burglars and were able to capture these images obtained by W5 as they watched the Chilean gang at work. First, the lookout. This woman checks to ensure nobody is at home. All clear, her accomplices, who've been waiting nearby, move in for the plunder. As more and more suspects were identified, the investigation got a name, Project Estruendo, Spanish for thunder. We observed where they were staying. We photographed them, took a video, and ultimately it led to March 23rd, where a group of three individuals were observed doing a, an entry in Toronto. And that's basically what triggered the takedown of this project. So over the span of approximately 48 hours, uh, the investigators executed search warrants and that's where they arrested 14 individuals and then recovered an incredible amount of stolen property. Our estimate was approximately $2.7 million worth of property. 
A Chilean crime ring accused of targeting the GTA. I would call them cowardly criminals. The millions in stolen goods recovered. A staggering amount that made headlines in southern Ontario in a bid to reunite the stolen goods with some of their owners. Each piece of property that we have on display here is connected to a person who's been victimized. A crime spree solved with the help of a brave neighbour. Unfortunately for the Crawfords, none of their stolen goods were recovered, and they were shocked to hear from police that the burglars were tourists from Chile. He also did mention that they were likely from another country here on quote-unquote vacation. Yeah, I'd never even heard of that happening before. It was, I mean, in a way it makes sense because people who live in Canada, we live a life where we enjoy, you know, a sense of peace and safety and freedom. So I guess we do kind of present an easier target. Coming up. They're targeting affluent neighborhoods. The police race to stop a crime wave. They go very quickly. When W5 continues. It's a crime wave from an unlikely group. Chileans entering Canada as tourists, breaking and entering homes, victimizing families like the Crawfords in Oakville, Ontario, whose house was burglarized by a ring of foreign thieves. It probably took about six or seven weeks for the initial shock and the feeling of anger to subside. The thought of somebody being in your bedroom to, comes to your mind periodically. I was more concerned about my family and making sure that they felt safe in their home. Detective Sergeant Paul Foley and his team from the Halton Regional Police Service investigated this burglary and dozens of others. They're targeting affluent neighborhoods and they can get into countries as tourists. In this case, police were able to arrest 15 and convict 14 Chilean nationals responsible for breaking into at least 400 homes. It's a crime wave that is a relatively new phenomenon in Canada, but internationally has been going on for a lot longer. Police say the rings operate in many South American countries, but most are Chilean. One likely factor is that they don't require a visa for entry here. South of the border, police in Ventura, California, arrested 13 Chilean burglars, accused of breaking into as many as 50 different locations not just homes, but also retailers. This jewelry store in Laguna Niguel, California, was burglarized by a gang of Chileans. This is the aftermath. They had hours in here, hours. After the thieves stole more than a million dollars worth of precious jewelry. Across the United States, multiple arrests have been made as police and the FBI sound the alarm on what they call crime tourism. In Europe, London's Metropolitan Police revealed that in 2017 and 2018, they arrested 75 Chilean burglars and intercepted packages of stolen goods being mailed back to Chile. And in the Netherlands, Chilean gangs have been active since 2013. Especially here in Amsterdam, the bustling capital of the Netherlands, teeming with residents and tourists working and shopping. But just like Oakville, Ontario, the neighborhoods surrounding the city core are empty as locals commute into the city center. Officer Nick Kenbake is the team leader on a unique and special national task force established to fight this type of crime. Uh, I'm going to show you a neighborhood uh, where, uh, where we have been uh, catch some uh, Chilean uh, burglars. The street. Uh, where we followed them and we arrested them uh, in the act. Okay. If you see those houses, you see they are older. Yeah. And that is uh, the type of house they are searching for. Okay. So their okay. modus operandi is from the back. Got it. Always on the back. They go in through the back, make a lot of noise, and then they must work quickly too before yeah. anybody catches them. Yeah, yeah. They go very quickly. They break in with crowbar. They prefer the door because that's bigger to yeah. go in and out. Yeah. But sometimes uh, the window. Also, a second reason why they chose these kind of neighborhoods because we have here our public transport 
right in front of you with the red uh, outside on the bridge oh, over there. Okay. So they can walk. They can walk to the neighborhood, make the burglary, speed it up back, and then they're gone. But then are they carrying all this stuff back on the subway? Yeah. yeah. They yeah. are? Or in the backpacks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. With years of experience fighting this type of crime tourism, Nick and his task force have a unique understanding of how they operate. For us in Canada, this issue of crime tourism is, is relatively new. It's a new phenomenon. Yeah. But for here, it's my sense is it's been going on for, for quite some time. How, how long has it been going on for? Probably five or six years now. Five or six years, yeah. and is it getting worse? It's getting worse, yeah. How are they getting in to the Netherlands in the first place? Are, are there visas that are required? Yeah, they don't need a visa. So uh, what they do, they come from Chile uh, to Spain, and from there they come as a group together. And that's the part when the organized crime kicks in, because from that place they will expand all through Europe. They use public transport, no planes, uh, buses, uh, vehicles, trains, uh, etc. And from there, it, that's the organization, because a little group goes to France, a little group goes to England, a few goes to the Netherlands. And why Chile? Yeah, that's also a good question. What we have from interviews from the Chilean that we've been arresting is that there is a, a problem with money. The organized uh, guys, they threaten the family to do stuff. So you have to go to work with us, we bring you to another place, you have to commit crimes. If you don't do that, we will harm your family. And that's the problem. With threats like that and a high level of organization, police are finding it harder to stay ahead of this type of crime. In 2018, 13 Chileans were arrested for robberies in quiet suburbs like this one, Demon, 20 minutes out of the city center. Most recently, that was two weeks ago also. Two uh, weeks ago? Yeah, it's a, it's a problem that grows, yeah. A growing problem, and what Nick reveals next is shocking. When people are arrested by us, the organized crime kicks in. They take the people, bring them back to Chile, and new ones are flying in. How frustrating is it for you as a law enforcement officer to know that people are coming in from Chile, criminals are coming in, yeah. just as quickly as you're catching them? Yeah, that's hard because uh, you're doing this to reduce the, the, the facts, uh, to stop the, and prevent. That's hard, but we want to go in, in the front of the problem. When you hear about these networks now operating in countries like Canada, yeah. what do you think? My first reaction that it was new for me. I did not expect to go to Canada. Really, did not accept, uh, expect that, no. Why did it surprise you? Because I thought it was really a problem from Europe. And what does that show you, that they're now able to operate in countries like that Canada? The, that the network is growing and the organized crime is getting bigger. While the issue of crime tourism continues to grow, Residents from more than 9,000 communities across the Netherlands have decided to take matters into their own hands by using a tool that already exists in everybody's pocket, a mobile phone. 180 kilometers north of Amsterdam is a small town called Haren, where a signpost declares this town is protected by WhatsApp Burt Preventie, which translates to WhatsApp Neighborhood Prevention a kind of high-tech digital neighborhood watch, a system security expert Arnoud de Vries runs in his own community. Are you finding that things like burglaries are an issue in this neighborhood specifically, which, which is also your own neighborhood? You live here. Yeah, uh, it's an issue in the sense that, of course, it's a new neighborhood, so criminals will always check out. Um, it's, it might be yeah, uh, expensive things. Uh, although there are new houses, they can still get in if they want to. So we'll have to watch out for each other. And that's why we use uh, WhatsApp groups, uh, social media to communicate and signal each other of things that are out of the ordinary. As the administrator, he periodically tests the system to ensure his community remains safe and vigilant. Here, he sets up a scenario of a stranger lurking, looking in cars, houses, displaying unusual behavior. A neighbor who is home during the day notices the man and immediately opens up her app 
and begins messaging the group. If the situation is serious enough, the message is relayed to police, and within minutes, a patrol car arrives. So tell me how it works. I mean, people are basically sharing in real time suspicious information that they see about people in their community. Not everyone has the same feeling of suspicion. So the threshold for each neighbor in that sense is different. So that's why we share it in a group and then another neighbor could respond like what you're actually saying is really suspicious. How do you know this platform is even working? Have you been able to quantify the results? Yes, there are some cities in the Netherlands, for example, the city of Tilburg. Uh, it has been researched that neighborhood WhatsApp groups actually uh, led to a reduction of burglaries of 50%. So it, it was cut in half because of citizens watching out and reporting these people to police. One important aspect is putting up these signposts saying we are an organized WhatsApp group. It scares uh, criminals away. So it then, acts as a deterrent. Yeah. Another deterrent might be to stop criminals like these from entering into Canada in the first place. W5 asked the federal government about that. It responded with a written statement. The Canada Border Services Agency, CBSA, is aware of possible South American theft groups in Canada and has developed an effective program to identify and intercept these groups to ensure the continued safety of all Canadians. But too late for the Crawfords. It has been over a year now since the burglary, and this young family still lives with the trauma. That fear stayed with me for a little while after the break-in. If anything, has given me more empathy for people who are victims. Um, and I understand that feeling of violation and that feeling that's kind of sick um, stomach feeling. And my heart just goes out to other people who have experienced this, any kind of crime against them. W5 approached the Chilean Embassy in Ottawa for their take on the crime tourists. Our request for an interview was refused.